FM5 to combination and sample mean of normal distribution. The syllabus asks us to discuss the distribution of a linear combination of independent normally distributed random variables and the sample mean, the distribution of a sample mean from a normal distribution with known mean and variance and then the central limit theorem. So use the fact that the distribution of a mean of a large random sample from any distribution with known mean and variance is approximately normally distributed. Therefore, if we have two or more normally distributed random variables, that is x and y, both normally distributed, then the linear combination of those, w, which is ax plus by, will also be normally distributed with its mean the mean of W would be A times the mean of X plus B times the mean of Y and the variance of W would be uh, taking the variance inside we square the coefficient so we've got A squared times the variance of X and B squared times the variance of Y. Also if we have three separate observations of X then its mean would be the mean of each uh, separate observation and its variance would also be, being as they're separate, not a formula, would also be the variance um, of each individual observation. And if we have the difference of two means, uh, then the mean of the difference is the difference of the means but the variance of a difference of two means would be the variance of one plus the variance of the other because we square the coefficient. Remember also that the variance of x would be the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x all squared. For a sample mean of magnitude n from a normal distribution with known um, mean and variance, then the sample mean is also distributed normally with um, mean mu of the population but variance as sigma squared over n of the sample magnitude. So that means that the st standard error, it's called the standard error not standard deviation because it's the it's uh, a, of the sample mean is the sigma squared over n square root of that would be sigma over root n. We need to use a central limit theorem in some cases uh, we'd be using the fact that the distribution of the mean of a large random sample from any distribution with known mean and variance is approximately normally distributed. So if we are using a normal appro approximation for a binomial distribution, we'd have a large n and we'd have our probability p between 0.1 and 0.99. If the p was at either end, we would be using the Poisson approximation to the binomial distribution. In this case, our mean is NP and our variance is NPQ and we're going to be using a continuity correction because the binomial is a discrete random variable and normal is a continuous random variable. I'll explain that in a minute. For a Poisson distribution we'd have a large lambda and our mean and our variance is equal to lambda and here as well we need a continuity correction because Poisson is a discrete random variable. Now, if our um, discrete random variable and we wanted the probability that x was equal to k, we'd need to take 0.5 either side so that our distribution for y would make sure we take the value of k in completely. 
if we want less than or equal to k, um, then we need to make sure that k is inside, so we need our y to be less than k plus 0.5. And if we want greater than or equal to k, then uh, we need to go 0.5 less than that to make sure that k is inside when we're approximating. So that's our continuity correction, taking 0.5, the correct side, to make sure our values are all in. Example. The random variable x is normally distributed with mean 10 and standard deviation 2. Uh, we're only doing b because we're doing combination. We want to do combinations. The independent random variable y is normally distributed with mean 12 and standard deviation 3. And we want to estimate the probability that x plus 2y is less than 36. So x is normally distributed 10 and 2 squared and y is normally distributed with 12 and 3 squared. We want a combination of x plus 2y so we need to work its expected value. So we get 34. Expected value of the combination is a combination of the expected value. We can take the e inside and we can work that out and we get 34. Our variance, we take the variance in and we square the coefficient. So I got 4. Variance of x plus 4 times the variance of y. So variance of x was 4, variance of y was 9. So we get that combination give us 40 for the variance of the combination. So our combination is normally distributed with mean 34 and variance 40. And we want to work out the probability that x plus 2y is less than 36. So we need to change that into z format for the tables as we are normally distributed. So um, 36 minus the mean 34 divided by the square root of the variance for uh, getting the z. So we want the probability that z is less than 0.316. We look that up in table 3 up to the point. This is uh, continuous now so it doesn't matter if we're less than or less than or equal to. So we get the value of 0.62 552 for part 1. Now part 2, these are all separate observations of x and y. Given that x1, x2, x3 is a random sample from the distribution of x and y1, y2 is a random sample from the distribution of y. So we need the, the probability that x1 plus x2 plus x3 is less than y1 plus y2. So we bring all those to the same side. So we've got a combination of x1 plus x2 plus x3 minus y1 minus y2. So I need to work out the expected value of that combination. So expected value of the combination is the combination of the expected value, which gives us a 6. But the variance, I need to square the uh, coefficients. So I'm just adding all the variances separately and we get 30. So changing our combination into z for the tables, we get that z is 0, it's less than 0, minus the mean, which is 6, divided by the square root of the variance, which is th 30, and we get that we want the probability that z is less than minus 1.095. Looking that up in the table, so we want the end part, the little part, so it's 1 being as a matching on left and right values of the normal distribution table, we, we want 1 minus 0 0.86433 and we get 0 0.13567 for the answer to part 
2006, 3B again, B only. So the weight of adult dogs of a certain breed may be assumed to be normally distributed. For male dogs, the mean is 30 and the standard deviation is 2. Uh, for female dogs, I call them Y, the mean is 25 and the standard deviation, deviation is 1.8. So we've got two um, normally distributed weights of dogs. And we want the probability that the weight of a randomly chosen male dog, one of them, exceeds the weight of a randomly chosen female dog. So we want the probability that X is greater than Y. So bring them to one side. Then I need to change them to Z. So I need the expected value of that combination. And I get, uh, I take away the means, so I get 5. The variance of the combination is going to be uh, add the variance added, uh, variance of x added to the variance of y. So I got 7.24, the variances I'm talking about. Changing of x minus y into z. So I need 0 minus the mean divided by the square root of the variance. And we get that z should be in there, should be greater than minus 1.858. And that's going to be a large part of the uh, uh, distribution table. So it's going to be matching on the left and the right. So that's going to be 0 0.96856. Question 8 of 2006 paper, same paper, says state the central limit theorem and then when a cubical die is thrown, the score obtained has a mean of 7 over 2, 3.5 and a variance of 35 over 12. Such a die is thrown 50 times. Find approximately the probability that the mean of the 50 scores obtained exceeds 3. So the central limit theorem says that we need to understand and use the fact that the distribution of the mean of a large random sample from any distribution with known mean and variance, we've been given those, is approximately normally distributed. Therefore, we have a sample of 50. So we want the mean of the 50 scores. Um, so the mean, expected value of the mean is the expected value of the uh, original, which is 7 over 2. But the variance of the mean is equal to the variance of x over n. Uh, if you remember from the slides at the beginning. So we need to divide the variance of x with the 50. So we've got 35 over 12 divided by 50 which gives us 35 over 600 as our variance for x bar. So now we want, the, what is the probability that the mean of the 50 scores exceeds 3, so greater than 3. So changing them, that into z, so we got 3 minus 3.5 divided by the square root of the variance. That gives us the z is greater than minus 2.07. Uh, that's also going to be a big, the big side of the normal distribution. So it's going to be the same on the left as on the right. So um, we want 0 0.98077 for that answer. 2012, question seven. So it's a slightly different question again. A garden centre says large bags of wallflower seeds. Type A bags contain a mixture of seeds of which, on average, 50% will produce white flowers and 50% red flowers. Type B bags contain a mixture of seeds on which, on average, 70% will produce white flowers and 30% red flowers. A manager finds an unlabeled bag of seeds and she wants to know if this is type A or type B. 
She therefore plants 120 seeds and she decides to label the type bag A if the number of these seeds producing white flowers is less than 70. You may assume that all of the seeds germinate and produce flowers. Determine approximately the probability of labelling the bag type A when it is actually type B. We'll do that first. So what you have, so we have actually got type B in this bag and it's uh, distributed binomially with 120 uh, and 0 0.7 with bag B, 70% produces white flowers. So that now is nearly normally distributed with mean N times P, so 120 times 0 0.7 and then 120 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.3 for the variance. So, if there are less than 70 labelled as bag A, if there are less than 70 germinating, then we're going to label the bag as A. Therefore, we want the probability that B, bag B, is less than 70. So, uh, we're going to use a continuity correction here. So, it's going to be less than or equal to 69. So that's the same as uh, if we had x, the binomial one, we need to take 0.5, so I need 69.5. So changing that to z, I need 69.5 minus the 84 divided by the square root of the 25.2. That gives us the z is less than so it's a small side, min less than minus 2.888. So that gives us 1 minus uh, the, th the table value, giving us 0 0.00193 is the probability that a bag is labelled as type A when it is actually type B. In part B, we're doing it the other way around. The labelling the bag as type B when it is actually type A. So uh, type A is binomially distributed with mean 120 but 0.5 producing white flowers. So then that approximates to normal distribution with NP as our mean, so 60, and NPQ as our variance, which becomes 30. And if there's 70 or more growing, then the bag is labelled as bag B. So we want the probability that A has more than or equal to 70 growing. So that's the same as using our continuity correction. I want 0.5 uh, on the left of 70 to make sure the 70 is in. So I want greater than 69.5. Changing that to Z, 69.5 take away 60 divided by the square root of 30 and we get z is greater than 1.73 so probability z is greater than 1.73 it's a small side so I'm taking the value off the table away from 1 and we get 0 0.0418 as the answer to part b and that's the end of the revision video on combinations and sample means of normal distributions.